it can be quite difficult to understand the Old Norse calendar system if we're new to it because it's quite different from what we're probably used to. So what I'm going to do here is explain the Old Norse calendar system using a model that I created and hopefully that'll help others to grasp the Old Norse calendar system as well. I'll explain what the Old Norse calendar system is, key points to understand the system, when the major points of the year were, when the festivals and blots took place, and I'll put some sources up as we go to show where all this comes from, the historical sources that the Old Norse calendar has been reconstructed from. So let's go, the Old Norse pre-Christian Germanic calendar system. Welcome to the journey in Midgard that we are all on. Some key points here to understand the Old Norse calendar. A lunar-based calendar system. 12 lunar cycles to the year, two halves to the year, winter half and a summer half, six lunar cycles to each half. And this is a really important concept of the year as two halves, winter and a summer, six lunar cycles to each half. So not the four seasons that we're used to. There's one lunar cycle for the month, four major seasonal points to the year. The start of the two seasons and the midpoints of the two seasons. And this is when the festivals and blots took place. The festivals and other community gatherings took place on particular new moons and full moons of the year. So the four major seasonal points of the year where the high festivals took place were at the start of winter, called Winter Nights or Vitranotte in Old Norse, the start of summer, Sigablot in Old Norse, midwinter, Yule, Old Norse, and midsummer, also called Litha in Anglo Saxon. Now, the historical sources mentioned three high blots or three high festivals each year. And that's the winter nights, the start of winter, middle of winter, Yule, and the start of summer. So midsummer not mentioned so much as a high festival or a high blot, but still a major seasonal point of the year. And yeah, there would have been festivities around midsummer, just perhaps not considered a high festival. And the reason for that being that folk would go abroad, go traveling over the calm summer months around midsummer. And Letha, the moon of midsummer, meaning gentle or calm, because the weather, the seas were calm for traveling over that time when, when uh, people would go raiding and trading. And so a reason why midsummer perhaps not a high festival, but still festivities around midsummer. So how do we know when these festivals or blots took place historically? When was the start of winter according to the Old Norse calendar system? When was the start of summer? When was midwinter and midsummer and how do we know? So let's go over that, the dating of these high festivals. So winter nights, the start of winter, was the full moon after the autumn equinox called Holst moon, meaning harvest moon. And so that's actually taking place in the autumn time, towards the end of autumn, but the winter being six lunar cycles, is, it's half the year. And so although it's called winter nights, it's actually starting in what today we would consider autumn, but what the Norse, the old Norse Germanic peoples considered the start of winter, the start of the winter half of the year. Okay, how do I know this? How do I know that winter nights was on the full moon after the autumn equinox. So Betty mentions in the 700s writing about the Anglo-Saxon calendar that winter is six moons when the nights are longer than the days. And of course um, that would be the winter time when the nights are longer than the days and the equinox being the point of equal hours day and night after the autumn equinox, the hours of night increasing which dates, which gives us the date of the full moon after the autumn equinox being the start of when the nights are longer than the days. So really good source there for dating 
these occasions. Okay, midwinter, Yule, when was the Germanic midwinter? So not on the winter solstice, this is the pre-Christian Germanic calendar here, the Old Norse calendar. So the, the midwinter and the Germanic calendar, the Old Norse calendar, was the full moon after the new moon, after winter solstice. And that, that dating coming from the study of Andreas Nordberg, sort of the most in-depth analysis of the dating of, of, of Yule. A link in the description, uh, people want to check that out. And another way to date Yule would be simply to go three moon cycles after winter nights. So winter being six lunar cycles, the midpoint would be three lunar cycles after the start. And uh, at Yule there was uh, the blot for invoking uh, for a good crop, for fertility, was what the Yule blot was about. Okay, so cool, that's midwinter. When was the start of summer in the Old Norse calendar system? When was Sigurblot, historically? The full moon after the spring equinox. And it's the same source there, Betty. So, summer also being six lunar cycles, and the spring equinox being equal hours of day and night. After the spring equinox, the hours of day increase, and so the full moon after the spring equinox being the start of summer according to the old Norse calendar system. Another simple way to work this out would just be again three lunar cycles after Yule or six lunar cycles after the start of winter would, would bring us to the start of summer. And Sigurblot meaning victory blot which tells us what the blot was for, what the occasion was all about, so it's marking the start of summer with a victory blot, for victory over the coming summer months, raiding and trading and, and so on. Okay, midsummer, how about midsummer? When was the Germanic midsummer? So that's the full moon after the summer solstice. And that's just using the, again, Andreas Nordberg study his research, midwinter being the full moon after the new moon, after the winter solstice, the opposite point of the year, midsummer, therefore would be the full moon after the summer solstice. And with this information, it's actually pretty easy to work out when these dates would have been historically. And if we're wanting to follow, um, observe them today, it's actually fairly easy to work them out. So you can check the links um, and, and check out, uh, you know, get this calendar yourself if you're wanting to use it. And it's got this information on the calendar as well. So. And just another point, this is not a fixed calendar system here. There are no dates on this calendar, and that's because the new moon and the full moon that they used to mark these occasions fell on different days from year to year, not on the same day every year. And so we can't give a fixed date. Like some calendars out there, it might be the solstices and equinoxes, but this is a lunar-based system that they're observing, and so these festivals probably would not have taken place around the solstices and equinoxes, but on the new moon and the full moon at each of these points of the year. Okay, cool. Cool, so that's the dating of the high festivals, the high blots, and there would have been, well, there were other occasions, other customs of the year. So I'll just go over those, some of these. So, Hostblot and Deserblot, historical blots. And Hostblot and Deserblot actually appear to be other names for winter nights or uh, sacrifices, rituals that took place on winter nights. Winter nights being the start of winter, the seasonal occasion, and Hostblot and Deserblot being the blots, the rituals that took place upon the Winter Nights Festival. And so and I'll just put up a couple of sources here that show host, Hostblot and Deserblot being on winter nights. And winter nights being, uh, well these blots, Hostblot and Deserblot, Hostblot particularly, was a blot for a good harvest. Invoking the gods for a good harvest, really important in the ancient world. And so that's really the meaning 
of host blot. Uh, Desa blot, a, a blot to the Desia. Another historical blot, Ulfa blot, meaning sacrifice to the elves, which tells us what the blot was about. But this is a little bit different from these other high festivals or high blots in that Alpha Blot, not a community-based major festival, but a private household blot to the elves. And so quite different, not community-based, not a major gathering, still a major occasion perhaps, not, not, a, not a festival in that same way. What other occasions were there of the year? Uh, the all thing, the major gathering, for legal matters, sentencings, disputes, lawmaking. And the all thing, sources indicate 10 weeks after the start of summer. So it's near to the time of midsummer. And the all thing meaning, well all things, the things being gatherings, councils, assemblies, public gatherings for the community, and all thing indicating all people of the land at the thing, at the gathering. And then there were lesser things, so not all people, not the entire nation, but regional or community, smaller communities would gather for things. And again, it's for lawmaking, trade, markets, sentencings, hearings, and so on. And there was the spring thing, the autumn thing, the summer thing that the Icelandic sagas mention. Now, when was the new year? Well, there aren't really any direct statements and historical sources that, that directly state when the new year was. Possibly winter nights, possibly Yule, but it's pretty unclear and since there is no direct statement, it's pretty likely the, new, uh, the concept of having a new year as a major celebration wasn't really an Old Norse custom. There must have been a point which they saw as the beginning of the seasonal cycle, but it's just a bit unclear exactly when that was. So when was the Old Norse New Year? Winter nights or Yule is probably the best bets there. Okay, so I'll just quickly go over the 12 lunar cycles of the year, because they, the Old Norse calendar system didn't have January, February, March, April, that's the Roman names of the months. And so what were the Old Norse names for them for the months or for the moons of the year moon cycles host moon meaning harvest moon on winter nights gore moon meaning uh, slaughter moon of, of slaughtering livestock in the uh, early winter time preparing for the winter yulia moon the first yule moon and then yule yule moon and yule being the name of the moon of midwinter and then there's also the Yule Festival that took place upon the full moon of midwinter. But let's just remember that Yule, the name Yule is used for the festival as well as the moon, the lunar cycle of midwinter. Then there's the Sol moon, the returning sun, a disting moon. There is Goa moon for the start of summer, Ein, Harpa, the early summer, moons, Skirpla, the midsummer moon, so that would be Letha in Anglo-Saxon, the hay moon, TV moon, and those are the 12 lunar cycles to the year, the names of the months of the year. But then every three to four years there was a leap year with an extra moon added, so a 13th moon, a leap moon, and that is done to account for the missing days. So there's 365 days of the year, but there are 354 days in the lunar cycle. Of 12 lunar cycles, there's 354 days. And so the extra moon, the 13th moon, the leap year, is added to add an extra 29.5 days, thus bringing back up to the 365 days of the year. And that's how that worked. Okay, I'll start to close things out here. So some closing thoughts. I've observed the Old Norse pre-Christian Germanic calendar for several years now. And what I've realized is that it's actually universal, almost universal, in that it can be used Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere. 
we can observe it today wherever we are if we're so inclined because I'm here in the southern hemisphere and I've been following it and I've found that it works it's not only relevant to the northern hemisphere and to northern Europe but because it's based on the seasonal cycles the lunar cycles and these points in the year and so it can actually be followed and observed wherever we are maybe not near the equator where there's not really a winter and a summer it's more like just summer all the time there but I'm here in the South Island of New Zealand and it, I found that it works here so but what doesn't really work is trying to follow the northern hemisphere calendars in the southern hemisphere because how does that work so I'm following the northern hemisphere dates and I'm observing winter nights when it's coming into summertime so yeah celebration for the for the winter when it's the middle of summer it just it just doesn't work but what does work is is observing the seasons observing the lunar cycles observing these points of the year because they're seasonal points and can be observed anywhere and i just want to give a bit of an anecdote here that kind of for me was quite a light bulb moment I guess so I was at a festival earlier this year and the band between songs said something like it feels like the end of summer and it according to the old Norse calendar system it was it was April time here in, here in New Zealand and we could feel it in the air the, the warmth of summer had gone and it was, it, it, I, I thought to myself, aha, yes, it is winter nights. And he, the band he said it without even knowing it. He, it was just what we felt, what he felt. And I, I thought to myself, yes, the old Norse calendar system does work here. And here's the evidence for it, that, that people are saying it without even knowing it. And I guess what my point is, is that there are these points of the year that are not just made up the Norse the Germanic peoples didn't just make these up and say here's the start of winter here's the start of summer it's based on observable phenomenon on the natural world and there are these points of the year that it's based on and uh, yeah I mean it's just an anecdote it doesn't really prove anything but for me that was uh, noticing how it does work here in the southern hemisphere yeah, so that's about it really. That's the Old Norse Germanic pre-Christian calendar. So hopefully I was able to shed some light on a, this ancient calendar system and maybe it'll help other people to understand it. Check out the links if you'd like to get a copy of this calendar. It's not really the most uh, beautiful design. I just I put it together and uh, yeah, not much of a graphic designer, but it fits, it's fit for purpose, it works and can be observed anywhere so check that out if you like like subscribe comment and see you in the next one